Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to Star Dynasties. So this has just gone into full release. It had been early access before. Um, I'm I'm actually really curious to check this out. It wasn't super on my radar, but the pitch, the elevator pitch, has me very, very, very curious. Um, basically, run like a, uh, a, a well, it says a feudal dynasty, so I don't know what to make of that. Earth has fallen, that sort of thing, and you have to navigate this grand strategy. However. This is what's in their blurb, even on Steam, right? It's a na uh, procedurally generated narrative that of human drama and personal politics mixed in with light empire management. So straight from the get-go, it is front-loading the you know the, the the drama and the personal conflict of your family with some lighter uh, empire management elements, which is cool. It's kind of back to front, you know. Now let's see if it if it shits the bed on the narrative end. But I'm curious going into it. Now this is this is when you just um, cold start the game. It gives you this straight away. Um, unlock incrementally as we progress. I think this is great. This is a great way to introduce the game. So let's see how we're going. You can switch between the game and the main menu. Escape key. If the text is too small, you can change UI and options. No, no, we're fine. So let's just follow the bouncing ball for the moment. This is a great first sort of uh, impression, you know, uh, to someone coming in that doesn't know the game. Main view, hold right click and drag, use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay, so this is the world. Okay, cool. Okay. Lady, you'll be able to interact with the map. That's fine. No, no, no. Drip feed me the game, please. This is you. Oh my god, look at me. I've got a big chud head. Very cool. Star Dynasty is a game about characters and their relationships. So, yeah. Maybe Kingdom Come. Uh, not Kingdom Come, Jesus. A great game, but uh, maybe more like uh, Crusader Kingdom Kings 3. We'll see. This is the inspector panel, uh, currently focused on your character. To the right of your portrait is key information. Yes, happiness, I am pleased. Well, that sounds about right. And I have a good reputation. This is all pretty realistic so far. Uh, character's personality. Okay, what, what we got here? Known military tactics. Duke, I'm a duke. I'm married. Ugh. Rightful baron, rightful duke. Okay, sounds like a good bloody start understands me for example duke alvin goodman is brave and friendly what is this brave and friendly bullshit diplomacy fleet command maybe that's a oh brave friendly okay yeah all right some icons such as one showing that your character's married can be clicked to focus on the related object oh we can check out my miso oh. yeah nah she's look you know what Love is blind. Plus, there was probably a great big dowry as well. This section shows your character's level uh, in a set of five skills. Oh, hang on. Can I go back? Here, this one. Yes. Skills. You okay, so yeah. Okay, what do we got here? Administration, military. Okay, this is very Crusader Kings. Bottom part of the inspector panel contains a series of information tabs about your character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. This is a star system containing your colony. Uh, star map uh, has been explored. The mouse over the system to see details about the colony or click to focus on it. Okay. Aludra. So, this is the star system containing your colony. Oh, okay. So, I only have the one colony. How do I know that's mine? Capital of the Goodman King. Right, okay. Aludra. Is that this symbol here? The Goodman Kingdom. Okay, cool. The little eagle is me. I understand. Okay. Uh, this tribe kingdom, uh, region on the map is your faction, the Goodman Kingdom. Okay, yeah, okay. Factions are regions of colonies that are loyal to a single ruler, its Duke, which is me. Dukes also personally rule the capital system of their faction. Okay, that sounds cool. Some factions are independent. These are shown in the map as a single color. Some factions are the subject of larger political union called a league. Okay, yeah. Your faction is shown as the Stripe region because it belongs to this league, the Singleton Dominion. Right, so I am a subsidiary, basically. In this scenario, you start out as a member of another ruler's empire. Yes, leagues are ruled by an Archon. Okay, I don't love all this sci-fi terminology. I'm, I'm used to the, uh, the Crusader King stuff, you know. Um... You can see a league's details by mousing over or clicking on it. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
This is the Master of the Faction League, which Archon Mira Singleton rules personally. All right, so she's the big queen bee. Political system is a pyramid. The bottom are barons that rule individual colonies. Barons swear allegiance to a duke. Dukes are independent, or they can swear allegiance to an Archon. An Archon, yeah, okay. This all makes sense. No, no, I get it. Even the most powerful Archon directly rules only one colony and is dependent on the loyalty of the vassal dukes. Yes, if you become unpopular, your vassals will rebel. Yep, Crusader Kings, if you're, if you're used to that, it's Crusader Kings in space. Some star systems do not have a tooltip on their name. Is only show Okay, these systems were never colonized by humanity, and we no longer have the technology to try. Oh, you can't interact with those systems? Maybe they're a travel point. As a duke, you're the head of a noble household or house. Physically, you are, your household uh is the part of the colony that you own in it resides the family members that are dependent on you and help manage your affairs okay you can see the members of your house when you focus on the faction all right focus on your faction to continue oh i click on the actual area got it um but i only get to hold one place that's that is different from crusader kings you can usually hold a couple uh, one of the most important characters in your house is Duke heir Ty Goodman. They will inherit your house and uh, territories. Yep. When your character dies, that happens. When that happens, you you continue playing as heir Ty. Yep. Okay. Cool. This is I, honestly, I'm actually new to Crusader Kings, right? So Crusader Kings three is kind of my first one, and um, and I don't really have time for the guys that. You know, there's some hardcore neckbeards that are like, ooh, two will, will get out. You know, that poo poo three. I think three is fantastic in the modern era. It is very approachable. And, uh, you know, for someone like me that's never had one before, it's really, really accessible. Um, so far, from, you know, that knowledge that I have, I would say that this is actually doing a really good job of introducing itself to someone who's never played a Crusader Kings as well. So if you've never played it before, this information is probably really new. It's all very foreign, but the way that this is spelling it out, I think is integral to this genre for sure. I can't even remember how Crusader Kings 3 starts. I don't know if it was this helpful. Your goal is to make your house the most powerful house in the galaxy by expanding your empire through political intrigue and conquest. You see your progress in the victory window uh, down here. You'll lose the game if your house falls from power and no longer controls a faction. Fair enough. Play more turns, okay? Star Dynasties is turn-based. After you take your turn, every other character in the game acts and you are shown important events. Click to end turn. Cool. Your son celebrated his coming of age. As an adult, he can now take an active role in House Goodman and a marriage for him uh, found to the house's advantage. Right. Your wife is pregnant. God, who did that to her? Hopefully me. Um, I'm pressing OK. Why can't... Oh, characters have emotional reactions to events. Oh! The icons under your character's portraits show that you are pleased. You can mouse over them. Am I? Expecting child. Expecting child. Okay, we're pretty chuffed about that. That's good. I'm glad. It'd be, it'd be bad if that wasn't the reaction. Happiness is important for your character. It allows you to take more actions makes you more fun to be around and increases your effectiveness at various tasks. Okay. Okay. As a result of the happiness uh, cause, you feel warmer towards Duke Consort Trisha. Ah, Trish. Miss O Trisha. If you mouse over their portrait and a bar appears under your portrait showing your opinion of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. What does she reckon me? Oh, she likes me a lot more than I like her. <laughs> um, if you're not messing over character bars on a portrait... Yeah, okay, cool. Let's see the details behind your opinion of Trish. With your character focused, control-click her portrait and drag it to the highlighted slot. Like this. That seems fiddly, but okay. Oh, no! Happiness, thrilled. Flip the focus character. Oh, okay. Okay, that's not bad. 
like that. Sometimes you must pick one or more choices. In this event, a Baron in a nearby faction wants to betray their master and join your faction. Oh, poaching, let's go. This would enlarge your territory, but it comes with a penalty. Before you take this decision, you need to understand reputation. When you hurt or help someone, usually only that character changes their opinion of you. But some actions will change the opinion of all characters toward you. The, these widely held opinions are your reputation. The most important part of your reputation is honor. Your society has rules. When you do something you shouldn't, you lose honor. When you go beyond what is expected, you gain honor. The re okay, yeah, this is cool. This is a little bit different from Crusader Kings, having like a governing sort of rules and culture set that Usually it's just your character has an internal moralistic standard that he beats his drum to, right? The comparisons are going to be there whether you like it or not, team. They're so, so similar to one another. I guess it remains to be seen if this is ripping it off or if this is homage to Crusader Kings. But, um, but normally in Crusader Kings, your dude might be predisposed to be a cruel, tyrannical piece of shit. And so if you just keep killing prisoners and doing horrible things, he loves it and he just rolls with it and gets, you know, more involved. Um, but he might be a softer dude. And if you start trying to make him do bad things, they start to like stress out and have health conditions. And, you know, they just, they die quicker because they live with this stress because they're acting against their internal sort of logos. So this is cool that it's more that your society governs your movements and actions. Um, when you do something you shouldn't, you, yeah, yep, okay, the red icons in the first choice show that it is dishonorable, and by how much, okay? Mouse over them to see what rule you would break, okay? Moral consequences. Respect the sovereignty of a duke over their territory, okay? Disrobable acts are usually quite attractive, but if you drive your reputation too low, you will quickly lose the game. Save it for the moments when the public outcry is worth the prize. Right, so this is my reputation here, 22. Accept the offer, it says. All right, come on across. Lesath will secede from the Han Union, become part of the Goodman Kingdom. Oh, it's a big hit. It's a big hit. Oh. When you act dishonorably to, uh, dishonorably to the sun, they get a grievance against you. Oh, grudges, let's go. You can see the list of grievances in the Judge Justice tab on your character panel. It's like the Book of Grudges from Dwarves. Grievance. Right, so this Camille Hahn fucking hates me. Despised. <laughs> an eye for an eye. Grievances let you seek revenge on someone and any proportionate uh, dishonorable acts against them does not reduce your honor. Okay, this is sick. I like this. Um... By accepting Baroness Ryo Becker's betrayal, you have given Duke Camille a partial justification for declaring war. Fortunately, we are stronger than them. Right. Um, this is cool. I like this is a better justification system for warring than uh, Crusader King, for sure. Definitely. Not saying it's a better game. I'm just saying that that's, I, I like this, that, that petty grudges um, actually justify war. Has broken allegiance with the Han Yun, pledged uh, Lesath to the Goodman Empire, delivering justice for the annulment uh, of Isadora Han's marriage, and in retaliation for Baroness Beckham being fined. Oh, okay, so they're giving me a reason why it happened. Oh. Huh. During your turn, you can take actions. Actions cost points or AP. And you are limited to how much you can do by your available AP. Okay. While your empire is small, you will find that you have plenty of AP to spare, as there is only so much you can consume your attention. You will find yourself significantly... Okay, okay. So this is my AP here. 13 plus 1. Right-click on a portrait, colony, flag, or region on the map brings up the actions you can take that are related to that object. All right. All actions currently locked, uh, but we'll start unlocking them shortly. Okay, so for example, attack, plan attack, invalid, invalid. Is not at war, right. Acquire claim, cool, cool, cool. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do. Okay. If you prefer, you can bring up the actions related to an object from the highlighted tab on the inspector panel. Okay, yeah, okay, cool, cool. So say we did click on Ross, we can click actions. There we go. I get it, that's cool. Full list of, by clicking actions in the bottom right. Oh, down here? 
Oh, geez louise. Okay, but that's cool. This is like a summarized. Ah, I like that. That's a handy menu. It's a list of things to do. It's a t the, the ultimate to-do list. Some actions also cost money. Uh, you gain money through taxing vassals. Unused uh, dollar dues at the end uh, of your turn is converted into bonus money. Oh, action turn. That's okay. Right. So there's a strategy for sitting idle, basically, um, which, you know, should be part of this. The activities of your house are broken down into five areas and your house has a score in each area. Cool. You can mouse over. Administration. Yeah, well, didn't we see these statistics before? All right. And it tells you how to scale, calculate it. For each area, you should assign a, a member. Yep, yep, okay. To assign a council member, click on the plus button. Uh, assign a council member. Okay. Pick a house uh, member to head your technology. Um, skill 32. Appoint your sister-in-law. Reputation. Disliked. What about mum? How do we get along with mum? Disliked. Oh, everyone hates me. Your brother? Yeah, he can have the job. Here you go, bro. Signed your brother as the head of technology. Nice. I, li I like the little the little art. Uh, all the little pop-ups. It's actually really good. From now, the ability to manage your council. Feel free to assign other members or change previous selection. Okay. Family. Well, I skipped over that by accident. Family tab shows the characters related to you. Note family members have a special icon on their portrait. Yeah, the little blood one, right? Your happiness is affected by what happens to your immediate family and your heirs will inherit your empire when you die. Nobles that are related to you are much likelier to act in your interests or at least not oppose you. It is dishonorable to attack a relative or fail to help them in times of need. Oh, this is very cool. As a result, you want to find marriages for your family members that strengthen important political relationships. Your heir has just come of age. Cool. Use the arranged marriage action. Yeah, okay. Again, I will reiterate, if you haven't played Crusader Kings, and I'm not an expert, I just, I played a bit of three. I played a lot of three, actually. But um, this game is boring very heavily, but it is actually leaning a lot harder into the sort of interfamiliar personal relationships than that game does. Like, it's there, but it's ultimately all numbers on a spreadsheet. The fact that you have to help family members in need or else you get a reputation hit, that's all very, um, uh, well, it's more of a feature in this game for sure. Your heir is your eldest child. You can find them there, the state symbol. Okay, cool. So there it is there. There's Ty. So let's click on, well, I think if we right click him, arrange marriage, right? Or act, get rid of this. Who would like to match your son with? Um, wait, I can marry <laughs> I can marry him to my mother. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <For now, laughs> close the loop. For now, a good candidate might be the relative uh, of a nearby duke or baron. As, as you play, you will get better at finding good matches. <laughs> Note that some potential partners will join your house, while some marriages may result in duke uh, the Duke leaving your house. Right, okay. Usually you want to keep a close hold on your family members, but there is a maximum size to which your house can grow. Oh, that is interesting. So you will get incentivized. Members, 11 out of 13. So you will get incentivized to marry your uh, daughters and that off, basically. Um, okay, cool. Duke heiress Lee Kelly would join your house may accept if you ask politely yeah let's do that let's get him a, a redhead miso he's now married to yes cool so my members went up by the look of it we lack the knowledge to build new colonies or significantly expand existing ones so there's a limit to how many people we can support having a child is the right of every man and woman having a second is a luxury that few can afford noble families that grow too large generate widespread resentment that is something i noticed with the map as well i'm presuming we can't expand more and it's made it pretty clear that we can't actually build on any other planets so we just have to work with the existing play space this might be the most unique and probably better 
greater mechanic, I suppose. Well, uh, I guess in Crusader Kings 3, all the, all the territories already exist. I don't think you can make new territories. But yeah, I think maybe the smaller scale might be to the benefit of this game. Increasing your house side behind the, the, beyond the limit is dishonorable. Uh, as House Goodman improves its income, the limit will grow. Oh, okay. 10 at 6. Oh, okay. So if we increase our income, nice. Income last turn is 10. Cool. Increasing your... Yep, yep, yep. To avoid bringing shame on your house, its members must be given permission to have additional children. You can see who already has permission by mousing over the limit indicator on your faction panel. Is that what you're saying? Following members are pregnant. The following members are currently trying to have a child. This is cool. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty rough, but I, I think this is a clever mechanic and it's very clever world building. You now have the ability to arrange a marriage for members of your house, divorce their existing marriages, and grant or take away permission from a couple to have a child. You can also decide whether you want to have more children for yourself. Justice. You are obliged to help your vassals punish those who have wronged them. Baroness Ryo Becker has grievances against their former master and wants to settle the score. You have two turns in which to do something about this charge, or you'll be seen as unjust and lose honour. I love this honour being such a such a you know cornerstone of this game. Because Duke Camille is a duke, you could ask your master to avenge these grievances. But you are strong enough to take this matter into your own hands. Okay. Baroness Becker has charged you with avenging Duke Camille's crimes. Okay. Are you the one that just joined me, Becker? Requesting justice for the following crimes. Being fined. The payment... The payments to rebels on less... Lesseth. Okay. You can directly avenge this crime by declaring war on the Duke. Jesus Christ. You can charge Archon Mira Singleton in turn to avenge this crime. However, any proportionate dishonorable act you commit against Duke Cam uh, Camille Hahn while charged will also be perceived as justice. Oh, hang on. Let me reread that. Any proportional dishonorable act you commit against them, proportionate, that's very subjective, while charged will also be perceived as justice. Yeah. Yes. To avenge a grievance, you must punish the criminal in some way. There are a set of punishments that you can use on criminals in uh, Aludra or your vassals, but these are not appropriate for a duke. Yeah, but this is someone from a different faction, isn't it? Camille Hahn is my enemy that has a grudge, right? Where's my grudge book? Hosted guests. Claims. I've lost my grudge book. Huh. Justice? Secrets? Inheritance? I thought it was one of these. Okay. Maybe not. Um. Normally declaring war would be dishonorable, but with the grievance we can declare war. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Let's take a look at our chances if we attack the Duke. Right, which, yeah, the person sitting here is the Duke, right? You. Yeah, 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 okay, I remember. Um, in Star Dynasties, you do not move your faction's fleets on the star map. Instead, when you attack or defend a system, you'll call nearby vassals and other rulers to arms, and the size of your fleet will be determined by who shows up. Right, click on Ross 780 and navigate to the power projection. Power projection tab, you can see the expected size of your fleet. If all vassals in range answered your call in the system, you can also, I think this is so much better, right? Because a lot of these larger scale games, I mean, this might be a hot take, right? But like, I find Civilization, Civ 6 and all that, weakest part is combat a, a lot of the time. Um, and I think, uh, and even Crusader Kings kind of struggles with rallying the troops and that sort of stuff. I think there's something cool about narrowing this down a bit. Um, you can also see the expected fleet size for each ruler that can attack or defend it. The most important part of this information is also shown in the tooltip. You don't need to navigate. Yep, cool. Fleets are represented by three values corresponding to three ship types. Each ship type is strong against one. Okay, so we've got rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so power projection. 
Feroz 780, if all your vassals are loyal and no other rulers get involved, you can project a stronger fleet than Duke Camille. The obligation to avenge your vassal is a wonderful opportunity to use this military advantage. Right click on Han Union and declare war. Okay. So, are these people that will back me? I mean, look, I'm just going to take the game at its word. We'll we'll look at this a little bit more in the future. Um, attack. Right click on the Han Union. Or maybe I have to right click on him. There we go. Declare war. You declared war on the Han Union, delivering justice for the payments to the rebels on Lesath, delivering justice for Baroness Raya Becker being fined. Right? Now that you're at war, let's go right ahead and attack. Right click on Ross 780 and attack. Okay. Who will command my fleet? Oh, here we go. The commander has a significant impact on the strength of the fleet and determines the tactics available to you. They will also oversee timely uh, field repairs after the battle, minimizing our losses. There are risks of injury and death if the engagement goes badly. All right, you need to choose a commander. For now, choose yourself. Okay, is that me? I'm I'm Alvin. Yes. Okay. Decapitate. Jesus. You've taken personal command. Yes. All right, off we go. You're attacking. Attacker has surprise. What's this? First phase of combat is the build-up phase, where you will canvas support for the attack. You can call each direct vassal within range to arms, and you can ask each other ruler within range to help you. Each request you make costs one AP. We've made sure that you have enough AP. Right, call on Lesath, who are the guys that rebelled to me, um, to, to call Baroness Roe Becker to arms. Now, is that you, Lesath? You cannot trigger events. Well, hang on. Okay. Cool. Oh, cool. Just click like that. Cool. The controller on the right shows the you, you a log of build-up activity. Uh, Baroness Roe Becker has joined your attack and your fleet size has grown accordingly. Yeah, I can see this here and I've got some more rock, paper, scissors. Dude, he's got nothing. Mass over breakdown. Normally you and your opponent take turns uh, to ask a ruler for support, but right now you have the element of surprise. When you ask a ruler to join your fleet, there is a chance of losing surprise shown underneath the request button. Right. Join the attack yourself and ask the remainder of your vassals to do so. Is that me? Alvin Goodman. Join. 20% chance we'll lose the thing. Call. You've amassed a respectable fleet. Oh, you bloody reckon. Um, normally you can also ask rules within range for support, but we've left that locked for now. Okay, that's fine. Um, as the attacker, you choose when to launch the attack. The defender always gets four free build-up moves after you commit your forces. Maintaining surprise for as long as possible reduces the impact of this defender's advantage. Right, right. So you do kind of want to just keep calling until you lose surprise. And now he gets four goes to to defend himself. Launch the attack. Here we go. So he's asking all these blokes to back him up. Resolution phase consists of three rounds. In each round, you and your opponent will pick a tactic, consuming it for that combat. Its effects will persist for the remainder of combat. After you pick a tactic, both sides make a damage roll. This determines the damage dealt for the round, right? Okay. Pick flexibility. Plus damage dealt. Plus damage taken. Okay. And he's using Suki stuff. Pew, pew, pew! Some combat tactics are counters. These nullify any effects. Uh, your opponent has played the particular... Okay, pick Decapitate. Plus chance enemy commander dies. Let's go. Cut his head off. Go, go, go. Oh, oh. All these numbers. Oh, look at that. What fleet? Tackle wins. Let's go. 
This is cool. I like this. I actually think this combat is very suitable for this genre. It's look, it's going to be dry for some people. I understand that, but I think it, it's actually really good for this particular genre. As expected, the kingdom uh, defeated the Han Union. Um, as is to be expected, your forces defeated the smaller Armada. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Cool. Hydroponic farm, farm is now abandoned. Now what happens? You conquered Ross 780. So what happens to that bloke? You are considering the fate. I'll leave him in power. Can I cut his bloody head off or something? Is that possible? No, okay. Okay. I suppose there's honor. No tyr tyrannical behavior here. Having conquered Ross 780, you must now choose who will rule. You can leave Baron Camille in place, but they are unlikely to be loyal. You can uh, see that for many candidates, choosing them would be a favor, but unfortunately it would also be dishonorable. This is because Baron Camille has a rightful claim to be the ruler, and those candidates do not. However, you do have a candidate that also has a claim to rule. Is that so? A claim is the widespread acceptance that the character or faction is rightfully the ruler or master of a territory. Claims reduce the dishonor of war or rebellion, but they, when they are led by the claimant or championed on their behalf. Claims are acquired gradually over time by holding territory or through inheritance. That's cool, actually, that you sort of, you know, you sit in the seat for long enough, you earn the, the claim, people just come to accept it, because that's kind of how it works. Well, you know, actually, it doesn't really work like that, right? As long as you have the actual right, rightful claim in real life, usually. But anyway, I digress. I like that. As, as people get used to it, you become the claimant. I, I guess, yeah, in a sort of more non sort of physical, actual, I am the Baron of, you know, I could see that you could develop a claim in the minds of the people. So Kenneth McCann has a claim. This allows you to replace him. All right, okay. Ken, where are you, mate? There he is. Let's go. You depose the Baron. He'll be replaced by Ken. You raise Ken McCann to the power of the ruler. You conquered Han Union. Let's go! The remembrance of the Han Union fragmented into independent systems. Oh, cut the head off the snake, boys. Irrespective of whether the new ruler has a claim to rule it, annexing a system into your faction is dishonorable if your faction doesn't have a claim to own it. Jesus Christ, all these dishonorable things. We'll see later how you may go about acquiring and owning claims for future conquest. Right, so, he, so Ken has a claim to rule it, but my empire does not have a claim to annex it. I get it. Does not have a strong owning claim on Ross, right? Now, does that mean that that my honor is dropping even more? Oh my God. It's not so good. You can now declare war on other factions and attack systems. Note that while we are going through the guided portion of the scenario, other dukes will not attack you. Uh, members of your house can be assigned to tasks that provide a variety of benefits. Let's trigger one to see how it works. Mintaka is a potential target for future conquests, but right now our chances of conquering it is in a straight fight is not very high. Wrong. Assigned a task. Mintaka is a potential target. Okay. Right click and use plan attack. Plan attack is crucial when trying to conquer systems as it gradually increases your projected fleet strength in a location. The time it will take for this to happen in Mintaka depends on the effectiveness level of the assignment. Skills of the character, their happiness, how much they like you. Okay. Well, let's put mum in. Mum really likes me. 78 military skill. Holy heck. Get on it, mum. Most assignments are outside your colony. A character can work on the task remotely through agents, or they can travel to execute it personally. Assignments carried out personally are more effective if you are willing to risk foul play against your house member. Yeah, okay. This kind of gives me Dune vibes as well, like that sort of political intrigue in space. Um, assignment characters out... Uh, carried out personally and more effective. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Council members cannot travel. They can always work on tasks remotely. Choose whether this character will travel. Now we'll send mum. Effectiveness 82. Absolutely, go. Now that the assignment is underway, it is listed in the member tab of your house. Uh, from here, you can stop the assignment, recall your house member, ask them to travel. Uh, your mother has started assignment plan. Okay, good. 
Uh, a colony is made up of a set of installations, bases and space stations that have survived from before the collapse. You can see the installations present in a system when you mouse over it, okay? Pairing installations provide, installation provider benefit shown under the list. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see this waste processing plant. However, many installations are damaged and will only generate their effects if you repair them. Start repairing this. I don't think I can. I need two action points and 60 bucks. Directors rule of the colony, i.e. not all the installations in your vassal's colonies will be useful to you. Ranged installations marked with an orange symbol in the lower left corner benefit all allied rulers in the area. Oh. Hovering over the installation shows the range of the map. Ah. Oh. For example, defense flat platform fabricator on Alkalurops provides a bonus to any improved defense assignment within three star lanes. Okay, cool. End the turn when you are ready to continue. Okay, your sister-in-law is pregnant. Well, good for her. Now, any chance I can... Can I save this scenario? You can only save the game when it's your... Wait, when it is your turn to choose an action. You cannot save the game during an event or decision. Okay, okay. So maybe we might not, we might have to just persevere. It's all right, I'm enjoying this. It's just, it is, there's a lot to consume. I know this video is uh, very much me almost doing a commentated run through of the guided scenario, but I think there's value there as well, because this, if you are new to this, if this is baby's first bloody king, uh, crusader kings like, then uh, this would be overwhelming as anything. So my hope is that I'm adding value by walking through it, you know, from the perspective of someone who's relatively new to this genre as well. A character has traveled to Aludra. They're here because they're working on an assignment for House Baron. This is not necessarily to our disadvantage, but you should keep a close eye on the visitors. If you do not like the look of Merit Baron, you can arrest them. This is dishonorable unless they have a grievance or you are at war. Your house's members could also get arrested, so be careful where you send them. Okay. See a list of visitors. So Merit Baron is visiting us. I understand. Hang on, maybe I can save this here now. Saving game, wonderful. Oh, okay. Well, look, we might uh, we might take a breather there <laughs> because holy heck, this is pretty pretty cool, pretty heavy. But I'm enjoying it a lot. Let me know what you reckon, team. If you're into this, I am. I am. But like, I can absolutely say, see, this could be hit and miss. Also, there is, you know, the meta consideration that I'm a YouTuber. I don't know how um, consumable and friendly this is from a, a watchability perspective. I mean, half of you don't even watch and you just listen to me while it's tabbed out. I know how it works. But, um, you know, any feedback around that would be welcome. And if this is well received and people want more, I'd, I'm happy to go down the rabbit hole, get through this scenario, probably build our own Gronk star dynasty. You know, you know it was going to happen. Um, yeah, I'd be curious how it's sort of... Because it's all fantasy, because Crusader Kings is set in reality, right? Like, for the most part, a lot of the stuff is based on, you know, you, you get real people from Viking times and that sort of stuff. Obviously, it does go wildly in its own direction. But I wonder if in this, you can just totally make your own custom faction and all that sort of stuff, because this is all bullshit fantasy make-believe. Uh, I, I wonder. I wonder. We'll see. All right, team. I might just leave it there for the time being, and I will catch you guys on the next one.